Hey guys, if y'all been following along with this hydroponic stuff, I've shown the rail system. Uh, as part of that, you had to have a circulating pump and you also need an aeration pump. We have looked at the Dutch buckets right here and they can be done without electricity. You're just gonna have to come out here by hand and water these things two or three times a day. And if you're working during the daytime, that's a problem. So it would be nice to be able to grow leafy greens like this uh, in a system that was pretty much set it and forget it, uh, get it started and come back in a few weeks and uh, go ahead and start eating. There is a way to do that. It's called the BA Kratke method. I'm going to get into that in uh, just a minute and explain to you exactly what Mr. Kratke was talking about. Before I get to that, I want to say thank you very much to all of the people who tuned in to the uh, radio show Friday night on PrepperBroadcasting.com, my very first show. I was blown away by the number of people that were in the chat room and the number of callers that called in asking questions. Uh, Y'all folks made me feel uh, mighty welcome and actually got comfortable after the first 15 to 20 minutes or so. A little bit uneven, different times in the show, but uh, I promise you, I'll do better. Uh, the folks who had tuned in to hear my thoughts and uh, suggestions on the, uh, the GM seed stuff, I never had a chance to get into that. A lot of phone calls that came in, I just never got to that point. But uh, that will be the part of the or the major portion of the next show, which would be Friday night, uh, I think November 16th, something like that. But uh, we'll address that at that time. Again, uh, thanks to everybody for stopping by and uh, making me feel as welcome and comfortable as possible. But back to this letter stuff right here. Let me show you what B.A. Kratke was actually talking about. Anytime you talk about hydroponics, there's always the issue of keeping the water aerated so that there's enough dissolved oxygen in it for the uh, plants to take up. And if you're going to use a static solution, uh, you need to make sure you have some bubble stones in there to aerate that water. That's usually the way it works. Uh, Mr. Kratke came up with a method uh, that you could bypass that and be able to do this kind of stuff and not need any aeration whatsoever. What he said you could do was take a little seedling like this in a little net pot, put it down in here, make sure it was submerged about a quarter inch in the nutrient solution and give it time to go ahead and start growing. Because of the fact that all of the roots are not submerged in the water, this plant can still get the oxygen and it'll go ahead and set roots coming out down in the water and begin to use up the water that's in the reservoir. Now what Mr. Kratke found out was that as this plant began to grow and the roots were reaching down into the water, the water levels would drop and there would be a gap left in here between the, uh, the surface of the water and the base of the plant. And what would happen is the plant would begin to grow oxygen absorbing roots in this area. So it would be able to get its oxygen up here and still have these lower roots to get the water and the nutrients. This is how you can bypass having an aeration or any type of water circulating system and do this 100% uh, off grid, not even having to use a solar backup or anything like that. Basically, as I said earlier, you set it and forget it. This can be done in a multitude of containers. One of the most common ways of growing lettuce these days is a floating raft system. I've got one sitting over there. One side is floating with the typical uh, floating raft method and the other side is using Cracky's method. Let me take you back to October 2nd, the day that I got my little two inch net cups in and I actually got this thing set up and show you what I'm talking about. Getting ready to put some ceilings in this little uh, floating raft, somewhat floating raft, a hydroponic setup I got right here. I've already got my water in this section right here. As you can see, I've got a divider in it. I want to do two different methods. On this side is going to be uh, the crack key method developed by B.A. Kratke out of the University of Hawaii where he said you could put the rafts on top like this, start them out, put your neck cups in, just barely touching the water and as the plant grows it will consume that water and there will be an air pocket in between there for the plants to get oxygen and you wouldn't need to run air pumps, water circulating pumps, anything like that. So that's what I'm going to do on this side and I'm going to do this one first. The other side is going to be more typical with the air stones inside of it to make sure that I've got plenty of oxygen for the roots. This right here is just going to be a test to see if it will work in growing lettuce without electricity pretty much. This is nothing fancy, just a 2x6 frame right here screwed in the corners and I've got 7 16th OSB under the bottom and then I just leveled it up with some cinder blocks 
this actually uh, brick fit up under there and some shims, everything. Try to get it as level as you possibly can. Very important to get it level. Inside, I've got six mil plastic right here. I actually went and doubled it. I have some scrap plastic left over from the greenhouse stuff, so I put that in here. You want to use six mil, get, it, get the good plastic. Get something that are pretty thick. That way you don't have to worry about little holes being punctured in and your water leaking out. Another thing you do, once you have your plastic laying in here, don't pull it tight and go ahead and start putting these strips on. Fill it with water first. You're going to do this on one side just to hold one side secure and then let the water press in all the cracks and take the plastic where it needs to go and then come back, pull it over a little bit snug and put your strips on. You can put them on the side or on the top, whichever one you want to do. What Cracky said to do is go ahead and mix up your fertilizer, get your water fertilized properly, do that from the start, and then you shouldn't have to add any more for the next 30 days. All right, I got my fertilizer dissolved pretty well. Put it in here. Notice this ain't the blue stuff. This is the green stuff. As you can see, I've got a string running across here. That's going to kind of help to support the center of this piece of styrofoam. And basically, this is just one inch styrofoam with the aluminum backing on it and you take a two inch hole saw and just uh, cut you a hole in there. Real easy to do. And this is going to fit across here like that. And that's what it's looked like with two of them on there. This is not actually going to float. It's going to just sit here and the plants are going to grow in this static solution up under the bottom. Theoretically. We'll see how it goes. So this is the first side that I did. Today is November 3rd, so it's been 30, 31 days since I started this. It has worked out extremely well. As you can see, this is the side that is not floating. The styrofoam just sitting up on top of the lumber frame. And things are done extremely well, except for this little bit of lettuce right here in the middle. And one of the things that I've encouraged people to do, anytime you're going to try something new, is do it as a test do it on a small scale never you know put everything all in one basket and go full bore right from the start test it out on a small scale and uh, make sure you've got everything right and give you an opportunity to tweak your method make sure you uh, know what you're doing and then you know go all in what you see right here is a situation where the pak choy over here on the left that romaine just up to the left center and the tatsoi and arugula over here on the right side did very well. Something went wrong with the lettuce in the middle right here. It just did not go. And it took me a while thinking about this thing, but I know exactly what happened. Take a look at the pak choy right here. Look at the size of the stems on that thing. It's going to take a whole lot of water to maintain a plant like that. Look at the romaine. Not quite as big as what the pak choy has, but it still has some decent stems on there that require a uh, pretty good water uptake. Same situation with the tatsoi, the Asian greens. Very thick stems on them. They're going to use up a lot of water. And then think about this Adriana butterhead lettuce right here. Big, leafy, but very little stems in it, so it's not going to pull up the water as fast as everything else is. What happened here is I have two different styles of plants. Uh, some that are very aggressive, consume a whole lot of water, and the lettuce right here that is not going to be quite as aggressive. Everything had an equal opportunity at the start. All of the net cups were sitting down in about a quarter inch of the water. Everything uh, was even to begin with. As they began to grow, the more aggressive plants took up the water at a much faster pace and the water levels begin to drop in the reservoir and they drop down too fast for the lettuce to keep up. So we ended up with the roots on the lettuce suspended up above the water, just enough roots uh, hanging down in it to keep the plants going, not enough to, for them to be able to actually perform the way they should have. Looking at the roots, this is going to be pretty clear. Look how massive the pak choy roots are. And then you see the roots on the lettuce right here. They're actually a lot thicker as they're trying to, trying to reach for the nutrients as opposed to this mass right here that's just constantly sucking up water. These right here are kind of suspended up above it. This poor little lettuce never stood a chance coming up against this pak choy. Most times when people show their hydroponic setups, everybody wants to show the roots. 
I'm no different. These things right here are beautiful, but I can do better. Wait till you see the roots over on the other side. And we'll look up under this section right here with a little lettuce, and this is some arugula and some tatsoi. And again, look at the root mass that's up under there. Just as clean, white, and again, the lettuce right here. You see the much thicker roots? This thing is really trying to reach for the water. What I'm going to do is take these plants out and uh, stick them in the other side that actually has some aeration to it and see if they can go ahead and uh, kick it back in gear. They, it might be too late. They could be already stunted beyond any help, but I'm going to try anyway. But you look at the roots up under there. No aeration in here whatsoever. I just set this thing in place and let it go. The only thing I've done is just walk by this thing and look at it. Got some more of the tatsoi. Those Asian greens have done extremely well on the aerated side. I even went and put a watermelon and a little uh, charentis or uh, charenta, that little French melon. I started a couple of those and just put them in here just for fun to see what they would do. This is my little watermelon right here. It actually has decent roots on it. I don't expect a whole lot out of it. I'm not going to take it to full term, but I just wanted to see what would happen if I stuck it in here in this uh, probably 60 degree water and see if it would roll over and play dead and it's actually trying to live there. This is my first time ever growing arugula and I don't know whether it's supposed to be flowering or not but it's got little flowers coming on it. I reckon I need to go ahead and start cutting this stuff off and put it in a salad somewhere. Got some beautiful chard right here. This is the uh, actually from the uh, bright lights that multicolored chard. This is the burgundy one and I got the I guess yellow or gold colored on this side. For people who are used to seeing a, a typical floating raft system, this is the kind of results you get. But you need an aeration pump, you need to be able to keep that water oxygenated up under there. Right here I want to show you something really cool. Uh, all the other roots that you have seen were nice, clean, white roots, just beautiful. This is about as clean a system as I think I have ever done and probably just as uh, simple and easy too. This is that burgundy chard, pinkish, reddish color chard. Anybody know what color the roots are up under this thing? Look at that. How many of y'all knew that the burgundy chard had burgundy roots? And you talk about clean, absolutely perfect. This is a really cool way to grow lettuce right here. Whether you're in a floating system or using Cracky's method of just stationary with a static solution, both ways are really inexpensive as far as trying to grow lettuce. You grow chard, arugula, the pak choy, just about any leafy green in here. And uh, you might could even grow a cabbage or something if you had enough time. And what I've done now is go ahead and turn the aeration pump back on. Kind of noisy, but just so you can see what's going on up under here. Basically, I have four four-inch stones in this side of the bed. Got one, two up under each raft. And right here is good clarification. This is a pretty head of lettuce and this chard. And to show you how the roots of the lettuce grow, this is the roots on this lettuce. You can see how much smaller they are than everything else in here. And this is clear indication of exactly what happened with the other uh, stationary side. This lettuce just does not make a whole lot of roots. Therefore, if you put it side by side with pak choy on a static water level, the water level drops, the more aggressive plants get their water. The lettuce like this does not because they just don't make as big a root mass. Very good lesson. Well guys, I don't think it gets much simpler than this right here. The, the rail system is cool, very fast, very productive. Those square tubings, the, uh, the square post jackets, about $23 a piece, so it's not cheap. You need an aeration pump and a circulation pump to run that. The Dutch buckets, very good for uh, tomatoes and things like that, but you really need to have uh, some type of circulating pump to run it. This right here, if you use Kratke's method of just making this stuff stationary, mix up your nutrient solution, set your plants in it, and go ahead and let it do its thing, just set it and forget it. I don't think there's any reason in the world why anybody can't grow some lettuce either on their uh, front porch, back porch, on their deck, or even in their windowsill. Just put your little uh, one gallon container in there. That would probably be enough to grow a head of lettuce or certainly something like uh, the Black Cedar Simpson where you're just gonna pick a few leaves off of it from time to time. 
that would work out perfect. So I hope you guys found this helpful. I thought it was very interesting, very fascinating uh, for me to be able to come out here and do these type of experiments and be able to, to learn something new. Uh, just makes me feel a whole lot better about the whole process. As long as I am learning, uh, I am progressing down that road toward being a better gardener. And this right here just gives me an opportunity to learn and just take it up to another level. And then being able to make videos and share it with other people just makes it that much more special. So y'all take care and Lord willing, I'll see you next time.